Hello, welcome to Centennial Hall, room 3213. This is a quick rundown of how the technology works here in the room. Up here at the teacher station, we have our touch panel. On the touch panel, we're on the main screen right here, and it says press here to begin. I'll go ahead and press that button. That's going to give us the choice for our projector modes, whether we want just the left, just the right, both projectors, or neither projector powered up when we boot up here. For the purposes of this video, I'll go ahead and click the both button. That powers on both projectors and brings down both screens in the center of the, or in the front of the room right The process takes just over a minute, and while that's happening, our touch panel is going to tell us to please be patient and wait while it boots up. So while that's happening, we'll talk about the lighting controls that are on the right-hand side here. We have five lighting presets, lights all on, both of our lecture settings, one with the whiteboard and one without the whiteboard. The uh, theater lights will dim all the lights so that we can view the screen, and then the lights all off setting. We can also control the lights from the panel over here on the wall. The five buttons here correspond to the five presets that we had uh, on the touch panel. And at the door we have a main on-off switch that we can use on both doors in the room. We also have a wireless microphone here in the room. On the top of the wireless microphone there's a little on-off switch. When I click that on, the microphone will turn on and then whatever I do, my voice is going to be reinforced in the room. Our touch panel is booted up now as you see and in the bottom right hand corner there's a button labeled audio control and when I hit that button it's going to give me some audio control uh, settings and on the left hand side here's our wireless microphone settings so if, if you needed to increase or decrease the volume of the wireless mic or mute it this is where you would do it in that audio control. I'll click back and then I'll make sure to turn off the wireless microphone when I'm done because the battery will drain completely uh, even if it's not being used so make sure and turn it off and then we'll go through our main screen on the touch panel here and the first thing we'll notice is that at the top there are two tabs a left projector tab which is highlighted and a right projector tab with the left projector tab highlighted whatever I switch on our source select row is going to switch on only the left projector if I want to switch the right projector, I click over on the right projector tab, and then I change whatever I need to on the right projector. So right now, as you can see, PC is selected on the right projector, and the left projector also has PC. And so if we look at the screens in the front of the room, the PC will show up on both of them for us. A quick note on the PC is that you will have to log into the PC when you're here in the classroom. We've already logged into this one. But the username will be the first part of your UWL email address, so your UWL username. And the second part, the password will be your UWL net ID. So that's how we'll log on to the computer here. Okay, so the next sources that we have are our two laptop sources, and they're located right here next to the PC sources. And I accidentally hit the laptop one there, but the laptop is the VGA laptop. An HDMI laptop would be the digital laptop, and both of those connections are located right here in this little cable cubby on the teacher station. There's also a power supply down in there, so you can plug your laptop in. You don't have to rely on the battery. And I'll go ahead and hook my laptop up. I'm gonna, my laptop uses a VGA connection, so I'll pull that right out of here and plug it into my laptop. Then I'll take the audio cable, and I'm going to plug that into the headphone jack on my laptop. And then my laptop's all hooked up and ready. And we've already hit laptop on the touch panel. And you'll notice that I'm on the, whoops, sorry. You'll notice that I hit laptop on the left projector tab. So the left projector is the only one that's going to switch. So now on the left hand side we have my laptop. And on the right hand side we still have the PC. If your laptop doesn't show up right away, a quick note on how to correct that would be it's probably not in the correct mode. Uh, you can go into your control panel and change this, or a shortcut would be to hold down the function key and press the F8 key. My computer brings up a nice little menu there. I want to make sure and choose the duplicate mode so that whatever I'm showing on my laptop is also going to show up on the screen. The next thing that we'll talk about is our Blu-ray. That's the next thing on the list here. When I hit the Blu-ray button, our controls for the Blu-ray DVD player are going to show up. On the left-hand side, we have our play and stop and rewind. And on the right-hand side, we have our navigation controls and our menu controls. There's also a button here for full screen video. 
When I press that button, it gives us a nice little picture of what's going to be playing on the Blu-ray so that we can preview it without having to turn around and look at the screen all the time. I'll click back there to get back to the main area. And our Blu-ray Blu is located right underneath the document camera here. You can use the front panel controls to control it as well. And I'll also note that a regular DVD or a CD will play in the Blu-ray player as well. It doesn't have to be a Blu-ray disc in order for it to play. This is also a good time to mention something about the volume control. Our volume control is located right here at the bottom. It's just a little wheel that turns to the right and left to turn the volume up and down. And right now on the left projector we have the Blu-ray and on the right projector we have the PC. But the only thing we're going to hear through the speakers is our Blu-ray. And the reason for that is because it was the most recent button press on the touch panel. So if you have two different sources up on the screens, the, the audio source that's going to be playing is the one that was the most recent button press. So keep that in mind if you're trying to do two things at once up on the front there. The next thing on our list is the document camera. The document camera is located right here. I'll go ahead and press that button. And the document camera is on the right hand side of the desk. The power button is in the back. When I press the button, the green light blinks. When that's a solid green light, we'll know the document camera is ready to go. I can zoom in and out or use the advanced features right up here located by the camera. You'll want to keep that autofocus on unless you're doing something really active and then you can make it manual focus so that it isn't you know, trying to find its focus all the time. And then the document camera will show up for us on that left projector once again. The last button that I'll mention is the auxiliary button. When I press the auxiliary button, it gives me a little sub-menu. Uh, I have two choices, S-Video and Composite Video, and both of those connections are right here back in the cable cubby again. They share uh, an audio source, but the video can either be S-Video or Composite. And that would be for if you had a video camera to bring in or wanted to plug your iPod in and play it or something of that nature. Uh, then you could use the device to control what the students are seeing, select what you wanted to on the touch panel, and they could see it up on the big screen for you. On the left-hand side of our touch panel, we have our left projector mute and left projector unmute, and the same for the right projector, right projector mute and unmute. And what that's going to do when I hit the left projector mute button is it's going to mute the video of the projector without powering it down so that we don't have to wait for it to power down and power back up. And it's also going to raise the screen up. So I'll go ahead and press that button. And so the video went away and the screen raised up on just the left projector. And that can be very effective because now we have the PC on the right screen. We don't have anything bothering us from writing on the whiteboard or doing whatever we need to do on the left hand side here. So I can write on the whiteboard, show them something on the PC, and then when I'm ready to come back to the normal mode, I simply hit that left projector unmute button. That's going to put the video back up. You can see the document camera is back on there again. And then it will bring the screen down so that we're back in the normal mode. Obviously the right projector works the same way, it just does the other screen for us. The last button here is our help button. That's an important button. When I hit that, it brings up the name and names and phone numbers of a couple members of our academic technology staff. If you have our problems during a class, that's the phone number you would call. If you ever have any questions or concerns or need set up or something like that, call those numbers and we'd be happy to help you. I'll click the OK button. That's going to get us back to our main page there. And the last button I'll mention is that on the bottom right, we have a button labeled System Off. When I press the System Off button, it gives me a little question. Am I sure that I want to turn it off? If I hit the power down button, it's going to shut down both the projectors, which is very important so that we save the life of the projector bulbs. It's also going to raise the screen up and it will get us back into the mode that we had when we came into the room. So I'll go ahead and hit that shut down and I'll remind you that if you ever have any questions or concerns, please contact Academic Technology Services and we'd be happy to help. Thank you.